Madeline's eyes became dispirited. She could clearly see the ring Meredith was wearing and it was the very ring she had designed. Madeline, you're talented. This ring looks nice. I like it, but most importantly, Jeremy was the one who put it on for me. She was flaunting her ring, her pride clearly written all over her eyes. Madeline curled her fingers and held the phone that was recording a video the entire time tightly in her hand. She smiled as she gritted her teeth. Meredith, did you just admit to framing me for plagiarism even though I'm clearly the original creator? Meredith scoffed. So what? Who's going to believe you? Who are you to compete with me? That's enough. Madeline tugged the corner of her lips and turned around after she said that. When Meredith saw Madeline behaving weirdly, she could feel that something was amiss. When she finally realized what was wrong, Madeline had already gotten into the car. After a while, a video went viral on the internet. In the video, Meredith's face was clearly in the shot and every word she said was genuine and sure. Madeline saw that the netizens were shocked by this. Then, some of them were even outraged by the injustice she suffered. She had been falsely accused the entire time. After a while, the comments below started to get out of control. They were all saying that Meredith was forced to do that. They said that Madeline caused her to miscarry and that was why she did that. That was why this was understandable and forgivable. Compared to Meredith losing her child, what was Madeline being falsely accused of plagiarism? Could it even compare? Madeline closed her eyes. She did not only lose her reputation, but she also lost her precious daughter. However, who would care about that? Madeline went back home, and when she was downstairs, she saw an expensive car parked at the entrance. She walked over and the car door opened. Jeremy walked out of the car. His tall and slender body was enveloped with the cold air of elegance. Madeline was being inhibited by his grandeur alone. She was terrified and wanted to avoid him. However, he stopped her, and there was a chilling glint in his deep, alluring eyes. So what if Murr bribed someone to accuse you of plagiarism? You only lost your reputation, but what about Murr? You killed her child. What are you trying to do by putting that video on the internet? Have you not hurt Murr enough? You only lost your reputation. He said that sentence so indifferently. However, each and every one of his words was filled with defense for Meredith. Madeline wanted to burst out laughing, and her eyes were slightly wet. She looked at him. Indeed, it's not enough. She clenched her fist and said those four words through her gritted teeth. I'll make that B asterisk chis life a living hell even if I have to spend a few more years in prison. Madeline lifted her head unyieldingly. She stared at Jeremy with her red eyes and did not show any signs of weakness. She wanted to leave after she said that, but Jeremy grabbed her wrist as he tightened his hold on her. She saw the changes in his eyes. After a few seconds, he said, Madeline, stop trying to challenge my limits. If not, I'll make you spend the rest of your life in prison. Madeline's heart trembled. She would be lying if she said she was not scared. However, she would not allow herself to be weak in front of this man. She forced out a smile on her face despite the bone-crushing pain evading her body. She pretended to be carefree and grinned. If it'll make you happy, you can hire someone to kill me right now, Mr. Whitman. I won't be around for long anyway. Worst comes to worst, I'll just drag that B asterisk TCH down with me before I die. It was evident that Jeremy did not expect Madeline to have the courage to talk to him this way. He initially wanted to teach Madeline a lesson, but suddenly, the expression in his eyes changed. His tone was as frigid as usual. What do you mean by you won't live long? Madeline did not expect Jeremy to be concerned about this. Should he not be yelling at her and warning her not to harass Meredith? She could not guess what Jeremy was thinking about. However, she did not want to tell him about the tumor in her body. It's nothing. You don't have to be bothered by what a woman like me says, Mr. Whitman. After Madeline finished saying that, she pushed Jeremy away. Perhaps it was the psychological effect, but the spot in her body where the tumor was began to hurt. However, Jeremy did not give up just like that. Madeline, you're so stubborn. Are you trying to put on a pathetic act so that I'll feel sorry for you? Madeline was taken aback before she laughed lightly. Yeah, I'm putting up an act again. How can a shameless and cold-blooded woman like me compare to the love of your life? I think Meredith must be the purest and gentlest saint in your eyes. When she said this, she looked into Jeremy's eyes. He was deep in thought for about two seconds before he opened his mouth. 
You're right, no one is able to replace Mur in my heart. Ever since the first day I met her, I knew she would be the woman I want to protect for the rest of my life. Before Jeremy could finish, his eyes became sharp and piercing. So, if you dare to hurt even a strand of Mur's hair, I'll make sure you pay it back 101,000 times worse. Every word he said felt like an ice sword slicing Madeline's flesh. The invisible blood was pouring out of her body, but he could not see it. Madeline's eyes were red, but she did not know whether to laugh or cry. It turned out he had killed his own daughter so cruelly and heartlessly just to make Meredith feel better. It turned out he wanted to protect Meredith the moment he saw her. Then, who was she? He had also promised to always protect her when they were at the beach. What about his promise of taking her as his wife? Was it a joke? Oh, no. In his eyes, she was nothing. She was not even a joke. Madeline suddenly felt like she did not know this man in front of her. No, he was not a man. He was the devil. After Jeremy left, Madeline went back to her home and curled up in bed from the pain. She did not take any painkillers. She wanted the pain to remind her that she needed to be strong and live with a clear and sound mind so that she could avenge her daughter. Ellipsis. Madeline started looking for a job again. In the end, the results were evident, no company wanted to hire her. She stood at the junction of the busy street and at the streetlight. Then, she started to space out. How would she fight with Meredith in her current situation? She saw a feasting and pleasure-seeking entertainment center not far away from her and she suddenly remembered something. Before she got incarcerated, she was still bearing a huge debt. She had been out for some time, but she never got any phone calls asking her to pay up. Madeline thought the other party was not forcing her to pay because they felt sorry for her. After she asked about it, she found out that someone had already paid her debt for her. The first person she thought of was Ava. She was worried that Ava had paid for her debt by taking a loan from a loan shark. However, the other party said that it was a man who paid for her. Madeline's heart was beating extremely fast at that moment. Jeremy's face instantly appeared in her brain. Was it him? If it was him, what identity was he using to help her repay her debt? Her husband? However, Madeline's expectations were soon crushed. The other party stated a name, Daniel. Madeline called Daniel immediately. After a while, he arrived. When Madeline told him about this, he let out a sigh of relief. I thought something bad happened to you, Maddie. It turns out it's about this. It's nothing. You don't have to put this to heart. It's not nothing. Madeline looked at Daniel seriously. Dan, I don't know when I'll be able to pay you back. Thank you so much. No rush. I don't need the money urgently. I know you don't, but, if you really want to thank me, Maddie, then you can treat me to a meal. I came here with an empty stomach. Daniel interrupted Madeline. He looked at her intensely with a gentle gaze. I'm happy to be able to share your burdens with you. Madeline could detect the intimate kind of love between a man and a woman in Daniel's eyes. She averted her gaze abruptly and nodded. Okay. Madeline just got out of prison and did not have much money. She was afraid that she would not be able to treat him to one meal. However, Dan had thought about this and said he wanted to eat taco with hot sauce. He was the young master of a rich and influential family and yet, he was eating taco with hot sauce on the side of the road. Madeline was feeling apologetic, but Daniel found a place to sit down carefreely. You have no idea right, Maddie? I love taco with hot sauce, so I always ordered taco with hot sauce when I was in university. Despite Daniel's explanation, Madeline also knew that the reason he did this was so that she would not break her wallet. When Madeline thought about this, she felt a surge of warmth in her heart. She knew it would be much better to owe Daniel than to owe the nightclub. However, she would also owe Daniel a favor. Madeline watched as Daniel finished eating. She could not eat taco with hot sauce because of her health condition. She was unable to eat anything that might trigger her. Walking on the streets occupied by neon lights, Daniel sighed lightly. Do you know, Maddie? When I was in university, I always fantasized about the day I'll be able to walk next to you on the street. I didn't expect that dream to finally come true. However, we're almost in our thirties now. Madeline could detect a hint of forlorn in his tone. However, he also sounded happy. Madeline smiled softly. Dan, it's a pleasure meeting you this time, but, are you willing to be with me, Maddie? He parted his lips and interrupted Madeline as he stopped walking. Madeline froze in her tracks. 
Her heart started beating extremely fast. You've already divorced Jeremy, right? It seems like he's about to get married to Meredith. She thought she had already lost all love and hope for that man. But when she heard about the news of him getting married to Meredith, the debilitating pain in her heart reminded her that she was still concerned about him. However, she was just concerned. It was over between them now. Maddie, I'll wait for you. Daniel did not pressure Madeline and smiled lightly. When he was trying to hold Madeline's hands, two rays of strong light shone down on them. A car stopped before them and an extremely familiar figure got out of the car. It was Jeremy. He was looking refined and frigid. When he saw Madeline standing with Daniel, he scoffed. Madeline, you're so cheap. You just got out of prison and you're flirting with another man behind your husband's back? If you want to be with this man, why'd you do everything to climb into my bed? Or do you like the excitement of sneaking around? 